obliged, obliged to meet together in the masjid on their training, on their business, on their jobs during that specific time or invalid or nullified or haram. That's the importance of the Juma khutbah. And at that Juma khutbah, lo and behold, not only was it a non-Muslim addressing Muslims, it was a non-Muslim addressing Muslims about an issue in which the Muslim Ummah has bleeding on over the last 70 such years. And it was an issue over which this non-Muslim is actually a supporter of the Zionist state of Israel against the butchery and the genocide and the massacres of Muslims in Palestine. And this MP had the nerve, and those that stood behind her, who invited her, had the nerve to proudly address Muslims. And subhanAllah, brothers, subhanAllah, spectators and people that are watching on live streaming, it was one brother in the audience who was battling with himself. Should I stand up? Should I say something? What shall I say? How do I do it? This is wrong. And he stands here now, mashallah, in front of me, and he's gonna tell you, and as they say, you can hear it from the horse's mouth, inshallah, the implications of what happened that fateful Friday, 10 days ago. Jazakallah, her brothers. All praises for Allah and peace and salutations be upon his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to all the believers. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Inshallah, I just want to very quickly go through what actually happened on that day and what forced me to speak out. Just like everybody else. I got ready for Juma in the morning and I attended the Juma. And as I walked through those doors, a sight hit me. I couldn't believe that in front of me, standing happening. And as I sat down and they introduced her, it very quickly dawned on me who this woman was. Not only was she an MP, but she's that criticism. And that she'd understood what oppression was and then she started to link that oppression that she felt to the oppression of the Kashmir Muslims and thought subhanallah I can't believe this I can't stand for this she started to say that I understand how you feel about the oppression in Kashmir and how she's going to stand up in parliament and she's to speak on their behalf and at that point I, thought I was battling with myself Farak what are you going to do? What would the Sahaba Ajma'i, would they be happy? Would they just sit here and do nothing about it? It doesn't look like anybody else is going to say something. And you're going to be accountable for this. And I forced myself, it's not easy to speak out in front of 600 people. I forced myself to speak out. And I asked her at a point, she started to say that she was going to speak against the oppression. I said, are you going to speak against the genocide happening in Palestine too? And she turned around a little bit shocked. Who's this old man speaking to me? And she said, no, 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 I, I'm, I'm clear on my stance. I'm against the settlements. I goes, no, I'm not talking about that. Are you, going to, are you going to speak against the occupation of Muslim land, Palestine? She goes, no, no, I'm for a two-state solution. So what two states? She says, oh, the UN sanctioned. I goes, no, who gave the UN the permission to take a land that belonged to the Palestinian Muslims and to give it to another people without their permission? I said, it was your British government that started that and gave that away. And the UN has stood by and sanctioned it. And they've done nothing since then, despite the oppression, despite the killing, despite the taking of more land. So this for me was a red line, that you've got to speak. And then suddenly, when the questions came, and there was a murmur amongst the Muslims in the mosque, and they started to speak up, she was grabbed and she was ushered out there. And rightly so, she had no right to be there in the member in front of those Muslims on that day. And how dare those people who invited her bring her to the front in that condition? Subhanallah, this for me was a community center away from the masjid. 
they know that they put somebody there, ten people would bother going there. Ten people would. If you want to discuss and debate, we're ready for that. Bring them there, but do not put them on the member of Rasulullah in front of us to give us their solutions. The second point was who is this woman? They knowingly brought this woman, this MP, who was a known supporter of the Zionist state of Israel, to come and shed to us light upon Kashmir. How she was going to, she was concerned for the blood of the Muslims of Kashmir and the oppression. On the one hand, she says, on the other hand, she's supporting the state.